Hey everyone, and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Today we'll be taking a look at this 3D printer, the DaVinci 1.0 Pro by XYZ Printing. Now, a few months ago I reviewed another one of their printers, the DaVinci Junior. If you have not seen that review, please click here to watch it, because in that review I noted a few things I really disliked about that printer, but does the 1.0 Pro provide the solutions to those problems? Well, let's find out. But first, let's talk about the specs. The DaVinci 1.0 Pro is a fully enclosed 3D printer. It has an aluminum heated bed and boasts a print area of 7.8 by 7.8 by 7.8 inches. It has a standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle and uses the typical 1.75 millimeter filaments. It also is Wi-Fi compatible, so you can send or monitor prints either through USB or wirelessly through Wi-Fi. More importantly than all of that, however, is that unlike the DaVinci Junior, which I reviewed earlier, the DaVinci Pro allows you to use third-party filaments and slicers. Now, they still do have their own proprietary filament cartridges, which contain a chip which keeps track of how much filament is remaining on the spool. That is handy, however, that means that you would normally be limited to the materials and colors provided by XYZ Printing. However, with the Pro, it allows you to use uh, any spool that you want. You can define a user-defined filament and use any brand that you like, which is amazing. However, most spools are too large for the internal bay, so you will have to print an external spool holder which just attaches to the back of the printer. This is a huge plus for this 3D printer. The ability to use whichever brand of filament you want is a basic functionality that every 3D printer should have and I would not recommend getting a printer that does not allow you to use whichever brand of filament you want. The printer itself has a gorgeous red and black color scheme. It has both front and top panels which open up to give you access to the interior of the machine. The hot end carriage is located on steel shafts which move in the X and the Y direction and the heated bed moves up and down on the Z axis. One of the surprisingly useful features of this machine is a semi-automatic bed leveling built in. The aluminum bed is held down by four ground aluminum clamps which serve as calibration points for a probe which is attached to the nozzle. When calibrating, the carriage moves to those four points, it touches the probe to those clamps, and tells you how to level the bed. There are three spring-loaded screws which are used to adjust the bed, and it will tell you which screw to adjust and how much to adjust it. You then tell it to probe again and repeat that process until the bed is perfectly level. I think this is a really elegant solution and I love the way they implemented it on this machine. Now, this is a review about a 3D printer, so let's talk about the 3D prints themselves. Overall, with all of the materials I've tried, both PLA and ABS from multiple brands, they all print beautifully. This thing is wonderful. The quality is very consistent and it's exactly what you would expect from a filament based printer these days. It can easily handle 100, 200, and 300 millimeter layer heights. Take for example, this 3D printer torture test. The orange print is from my Maker Farm Prusa and the red is from the DaVinci Pro. The DaVinci Pro's print wins by far. The bridging is beautiful. The thin tower is actually a tower, unlike the print from my other printer. Overall, it is just a very high quality print. Usually ABS is a pain to deal with as the layers have a tendency to split apart and warp due to uneven cooling, but the enclosure really helps to mitigate that, especially on tall, thin-walled prints. There's just very little splitting occurring with ABS. Smaller PLA prints can have a little trouble on this machine because there is no cooling fan blowing directly on the prints, so overhangs can get a little droopy. Larger PLA prints though, like the Squirtle, uh, prints wonderfully, or if you just slow it down a little bit, that'll help mitigate the droopiness on the overhangs. One downside in my eyes is the print surface. I've never been a big fan of using tape as my print surface. It just doesn't give consistent adhesion, it's very easy to rip, and once it does start to rip, you have to pull it all off and replace it, which is just a pain in my eyes. Um, it does seem to work okay with both PLA and ABS. I did have one print failure though, this 3D Benchy, which pulled off the print bed and stuck itself to the nozzle, creating a little puddle of ooze. Uh, a little glue stick on that tape surface 
seem to help mitigate that adhesion problem, so you may want to give that a try. The biggest drawback with this printer is its speed, or more precisely, the lack thereof. The fastest I could push this printer was about 45 millimeters per second before there were bad vibrations and noises coming from the printer. Now this is about half as fast as many other filament-based printers. So if you're expecting high quality prints, this thing can provide it, just don't expect it to print very fast. The printer is controlled through their software, XYZWare Pro. It's a slicer which is also used to send files to the printer, either through USB or Wi-Fi. The slicing portion is leaps and bounds better than the version for the Junior. With the Pro version, you have full control over all of the settings you'd expect. Print speeds, layer heights, rafts, supports, and brims. And if you don't like the way that XYZWare slices your file, you can even import G-code generated by other programs and simply send it to the printer. This gives you much more flexibility and allows you to use your favorite slicer with this 3D printer, which is a great feature. The software is also actively being worked on. I was going to talk about how one of my biggest complaints with the software was that you did not have the ability to adjust the setting and re-slice the file. You used to have to delete the file, re-import the STL, reposition it, rescale it, do all that tweaking, then adjust the settings and re-slice every time that you wanted to make a change. That was a huge pain. However, two weeks after I received this printer, they uh, had an update to the software that added that functionality. So I'm excited to see how that software grows in the future. So overall, I think that this is a great printer. XYZ Printing has it listed for about $700, US although you can find it online from other retailers for under $600. At that price, I'd actually highly recommend this printer. The ability to use third-party filaments instead of their own proprietary filaments is a must-have for any printer, and this printer actually produces some pretty high-quality prints. The DaVinci Junior that I reviewed left a very bad taste in my mouth, but it seemed that XYZ Printing uh, has tried to redeem themselves with the DaVinci 1.0 Pro. So if you were looking at the DaVinci Junior, I'd recommend saving a little extra money and going for the 1.0 Pro because you will not regret it. So thank you guys for watching my review of the DaVinci 1.0 Pro. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I would love to hear what you guys think. And if you thought this video was informative, please click that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, check out some of my other videos. I've had a blast making them, and the comments left by this community in those videos are amazing. You guys are great. So thank you guys for watching, and as always, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Hoffman Engineering.